Today we are going to go through the export settings and I'm way too excited for this, but yes, let's do it because we've just worked on a project. We've spent hours and the time is there. We can finally, finally export our video. It kind of is something to be excited about, right? So today we are going to go through all the export settings, everything you need to know in order to make sure that your video is of the highest quality and will just look on YouTube. This video is actually part of a series that I very cleverly and creatively called Premiere Pro for Beginners. So creative. In this series, I show everything you need to know in order to edit your first video, edit the audio of your first video, color correct your first video, and now export your first video. So if you haven't checked that out, I'll put it in the cards, I'll put it in the description box, all the links to everything, the music that you hear, everything is in the description box. So make sure to check that out after watching the video. If we haven't met yet, my name is Lila, so lovely to meet you. And on this channel, I share my best filmmaking tips and tricks, as well as video editing tutorials in order to help you create better videos in a very simple, simple way. Before we start, I do want to point out that my video and the export settings that you will see are for a 4K video in a two by one ratio, which may mean absolutely nothing to you. And that is fine. I got a lot of questions about how I export my videos and what settings I use. So I'm going to show that in this video, I'm going to explain most of the things you need to know. I'm not going to go into much detail about all the technicalities because who cares? Well, if you care, there's a bunch of videos on YouTube. I just care about, you know, what you need to know in order to do this stuff. As I just said, I export my videos in 4K. All of my videos on YouTube are in 4K. And if you don't export in 4K or you don't film in 4K, you don't upskill to 4K, that is fine. Just let me know in the comments if you want a 1080p specific video. However, you can apply a lot from this to that if you want, but I can go into the specifics of exporting in 1080p. Two by one is basically a little bit more rectangular than 16 by nine, which creates a little black bars. But again, I have made a video, so let's not talk about that. Let's go into Premiere Pro and let's export our video. So in order to export a video, you have to go to file, export and media. Now it could be like it is in my case that it doesn't pop up. And that is because you have not selected the sequence. So make sure that you click on this box right here, the sequence window, and then click on file, export and media. And now it's there. Now, as you can see, there is a lot of export settings right here. You have format, preset, comments, output name, export video, audio, etc., etc. So right here, it says match sequence settings. You can just simply tick this box and what it does is it will match it to the sequence settings. Duh. <laughs> And I think this is useful for a lot of you because you've already created your sequence with your desired settings. So right here, if you just match it to the sequence settings, you're done. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. We are not going to take that box. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to make sure that the format is H264. Right here, you can see that it is a drop down menu and you can choose from many different formats. You don't have to choose this one. Now, here is preset. And as I showed you in the first part of this series, I showed you that what you can do is you can just go down here and then go to YouTube 1080p full HD, click on that, and then you will have the perfect settings for YouTube for 1080p. The same goes for 4K for YouTube. You even have presets for Twitter, for Facebook basically for a lot of things. So what you can also do is match the source. And as you can see right here, I have created my own custom preset. So I'm just going to click on that and then I'm going to explain to you all the settings and why I chose it. Now you might be wondering, Lila, why don't I just choose the preset? Well, of course you can, like I recommended in the first video, you can choose the preset, you'll be good to go. But we're just going for that little, little extra. So I'm gonna go for 4K two by one. So then what you'll see here, comments, if you want to drop some comments, if you want to drop a comment, do below this video. Don't do there, do below the video. <laughs> and here you'll see the output name. And if you want to change that, just click on it and then change the name right here. Then what you will see here is the export video and export audio. And this is something that you want to have checked both of them. I've had situations where I only needed to export the video, not the audio, just the video. So I would only take the box export video. And then later, 
I wanted to export the entire video, but I forgot to tick the export audiobooks. And let me tell you, wasting an hour waiting for a video that doesn't have audio, mm, you don't wanna do that. So make sure that both of them are ticked. Now, right here, you'll see the summary of the output settings, everything. I don't really care for it. I don't really look at it. Maybe I should, I don't know, I don't do that. But then what is really important are basically the two tabs right here, video and audio. Now, if you want to change any of the grayed out um, settings, all you have to do is untick the boxes. So what I did here was I changed the width and I changed the height to a two by one ratio. But if, for example, you want a 16 by nine, um, 1080p video, what you would have to do is type in 1920 by 1080 right here. Now, this is where you can just say it's linked or it's not linked. Let's just check that so I don't mess it up. Now here you wanna make sure that the frame rate is right. So if you shot it in 24 frames per second, make sure that right here, this is what it says, 23.976. Then the field order is progressive. The aspect is square pixels. And then these are some other basic settings. Now this one is interesting because this is render at maximum depth. And I did a little Google research, research on Google because I know that this is a very debatable setting. I use it, but you don't have to use it. Huh. So there's a thing, I'm not gonna go too much into it, but there's a thing people say that you don't need it and there's people like me who do check it. Basically, if you already have a powerful GPU, you don't need to do it because your GPU will take care of it for you. And I have a GPU, so now you may wonder, so Lila, why do you still click the box? Well, because I want my videos to be the best quality possible and I do a lot of color correcting and color grading. And generally it is recommended to tick the box if you do a lot of grading and you want to avoid any banding issues. So if you have banding issues or if you do a lot of color grading like me, then I would recommend to tick it, but it is totally your choice because it does increase the render time. So the time it takes to export the video. So next are these encoding settings and this, this is to be honest, something that I've never really touched. So um, this is what it is. But then here we have the bitrate settings and this is where it gets interesting. So the bitrate settings, it is very important. I'm just gonna touch on the things that are very important, but if you wanna know more, I'll find a video, I'll put it in the description as well, so you can check that out if you wanna know all about bit rates. But if you just wanna know what to choose and why you should choose it, then this is what, that is what I'm gonna be talking about. There are two types of bitrate encoding. There is the VBR and the CBR, and the VBR is the variable bitrate. So basically variable bitrate means that it will vary depending on whatever happens in your video. All you need to know about VBR one and two, which stands for variable bitrate, like I just said, is that there is one pass and two pass, and one pass, very simply put, it means that your video will be rendered once. So Premiere Pro will guess where the bitrate should be at. And then if you choose a two pass, it will render it first and then it will kind of correct itself for the second part. So the second pass through your video. So obviously when you think about it, if Premiere Pro has to go through the video and render the video twice for the two pass, it will take more time because Premiere Pro has to go through the video and render the video twice, but it is the optimal choice because you will get the best video quality and size because it is a lot smaller than CBR, which stands for constant bit rates. Now, as you can see, I use CBR, which means that regardless of what is going on in your video, the bit rate will remain constant. And the reason why I use CBR, even if it produces large files, which thankfully my computer can handle, is because YouTube compresses your video. So I always choose CBR, and by choosing CBR and setting the bit rate to 80 or 100, which sounds very excessive, you will make sure that YouTube can compress the out of your video and it's okay. I actually bleep myself out there. <laughs> the quality will be really good. So when YouTube compresses your video, you will be fine. Now, like I said, VBR 2Pass is a really great choice as well. So just see what works for you, what works for your computer and what gives you the best output. But this is what I do. Now that we're done with the video settings, let's go to the audio settings and we'll go through this very quickly. You wanna make sure that you have clicked on AAC 
And right here as well, you see the audio codec. Make sure that that is AAC as well. Make sure that the sample rate is as high as 48,000 Hertz. And here for channels, you can choose five to one, but like it's YouTube, so I always just do stereo. Now, if we scroll down, we see the audio quality and obviously we want that to be high. And then again, we have bitrate settings. Now, what I'm gonna say about the bitrate settings, don't wanna go too much into it, is that you want it to make sure that it is as high as possible. And then right here with advanced settings, you have bitrate or sample rate and make sure that you take bitrate. Now, we're almost done because as you can see right here, I have clicked on use maximum render quality. Now, if again, we hover over it, it says gives better quality scaling, but increases the encode time. So this is another debatable thing. People debate about this, whether you have to click it or not. I know a lot of people who don't tick this box. I know a lot of people, me, who do tick that box. And again, this is another one of those things that people say that is irrelevant if you have a GPU, which is true, and it slows down your export. So why do I still tick it, you may ask? The reason why I tick this box is because I always rescale my videos. So if you're doing any resizing or rescaling from 4K footage or 1080p footage, that is when you would tick this box. Or at least I would recommend you to tick that box. So one thing before you hit export, one very important thing that you wanna make sure is right, is right here under your video. Can we for a second appreciate this face? <laughs> Right here, you can see that the entire sequence, the entire video has been selected. And right here it says source range, sequence in and out. And you can also do work area or entire sequence. Now make sure if you tick on entire sequence that you know that there is not one little bit that you just pushed all the way to the end. And then, you know, it takes forever. And then you're watching your video and there's like 10 minutes of black. And then all of a sudden something pops up. So make sure that that is not the case. Now right here you see time interpolation. I'm not gonna go into that, just choose frame sampling. And then as you can see, the estimated file size for this video is 10 gigabytes. Like I said, it's a lot. It's also because of the CBR, because if I were to change that, you can see that it changes. So I always go for CBR and then I make sure that this is 100, so we're back to 10 gigabytes. Now there's two things that you can do. You can hit export and go do something else, or you can hit on Q, which opens up the media encoder and you can export it from the media encoder, which allows you to still work in Premiere Pro, which is awesome if you have a lot of things to do. So now you can continue working on your next project, which is what I'm gonna do right now. So make sure to hit subscribe and the notification bell in case you wanna be notified or watch this video while I am going to be working on my next tutorial. See you later.